Hello. This is going to be a follow-up video um, regarding vectors. Because uh, I just want to make sure that everyone understands it very, very clearly before we move on. Because it's really, really important. Just if we name this vector Bob. And we say that it has a magnitude or a length of d. And it's at an angle of t here from the horizontal. That's theta. Under representing it as t is theta. Well then, this x shadow, the shadow, kind of this uh, light shining down over D, is going to be basically the X component of whatever it would be if, this, if it was a circle. So the X coordinate of that point on the circle times D, the length, or rather how big it is. Same thing here, the height, it increases with D, but that's kind of like the ratio of the height to the overall length of this line here because of this angle. I don't know if that made any sense, but hopefully something did. So we can say that Bob right here is kind of like this x length, this d times the, co times the cosine of t in the i direction. Remember, this is our units in the x direction. Right? Units in X. So it's that uh, plus plus the height, and that's in units in the Y direction, right? So you might imagine this is unit meters east, or eastern meters, I don't know. And this is units or northern meters. So if you have then I'm saying another copy of this, but I'm gonna change some stuff around. Um let's see ah crap, where's my eraser? Oh here it is. So let's make that something different. This will be something different. Okay, so this is still going to be the same kind of format. It's just not going to be quite the same numbers, but it should still make sense. And if it doesn't, then um, come talk to me and I'll help you make it make sense. Um, so Alice, it's some other... Uh, try to do this on your own also as I give you the information. Alice is some other vector, some other pointer, arrow, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to say that the length of it uh, we're going to say that the length is... Hmm, what should the length be? I don't know. Let's go with... Can you see that color? Yeah. Let's go with maybe... What's a good letter? C. No, it's a terrible letter. What am I talking about? It's also a terrible color. Let's go with, um... Uh, what's a letter that people don't use much? G? That's a nice letter. G. It's very mellow. Very mellow. Um, so that's going to be the magnitude. And where does that come into play? Well, we can put that right here, right? Because the size of the shadow depends on the size of the object. So as the object gets bigger, the shadow gets bigger. So that's kind of what the cosine is right there. And the angle, we can make a new angle. And, uh, we'll make that red, I don't know. We can call it K. Like, I guess I'll keep consistent with my last video. So it's the cosine of k, obviously, the sine of k, hopefully that seems kind of obvious. And then again, the height of an object, even if it's at an angle, depends on the overall size of the object. So again, we're going to take this g, and that's going to go right there. And then if you want to add, I'm loving these tools in paint now, if you want to add Alice, oh, fancy me. Believe me, uh, if you want to add Alice plus Bob, then what we end up with is this. What's the best way to do this? Okay, I'm just going to type it all out. I'm sorry, I'm not going to, I can't keep with the color coding anymore. Um, 
so first, actually, here, let's write the i unit vector first, just to get that out of the way so we don't forget it. So here we've got maybe units east or whatever. This is units in the x direction. So how many units in the x direction? Well, that's g times cosine of k plus d times cosine of t. Right? That's just what we have right here. We're just adding the units together. So that's what we have in the i direction. That's what we have in i. That's how many i units we have. That's what we have in the x direction. Plus j, our north units, our units in the y direction. And that's just g cosine of k. Uh, I'm sorry, not cosine. g sine of k, the height of the one object or rather the one arrow, the one vector, plus d sine of t, which is the height of the other one. So you should kind of notice some similarities here. And now we actually have a really simple problem, because again, cosine of k, you know k, they're going to give you k, they're going to give you t, most likely. I, don't, I can't think of any examples where they haven't given us so far. They're going to give you k, they're going to give you t, they're probably going to give you d and g as well, but uh, they're never going to make you solve for more than one variable. So they're going to give you pretty much all this stuff. And you literally plug in numbers, use your calculator, take the cosines, multiply by g and d, add them together, and then once you have this... Oops, crap, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so then once you have each of these two numbers right here, You've got this, which that's the x component, you might call it, which that's what they'll call it. Uh, and then you've got this, the y component of it. Well, then you know that uh, x squared plus y squared equals well, that actually equals the z squared, but if I want to get rid of that squared, if I just want to find out the z, I would take the square root of all this. So, you square each of these and add them together, and then take the square root of that, and then the final answer, so to speak. And it sounds kind of ugly, because right now it's in sine and cosine, but if you plug in numbers and you get actual values, like say 4.195, it's a lot easier to just square the numbers and then take the square root. It's all simple math. And then again, we've got the tan inverse. Actually here, let me clear away some area because I do want to show you this. Um, or at least let me move this out of the way. There we go. So, I want to take the tan inverse. And what am I taking the inverse tangent of here? Well, what I'm taking the inverse tangent of is really the y component, north, divided by the x component, east. That, if, so, so to speak. So it's this right here. Um, again, I'm just going to copy and paste it right over so you see where I'm getting this from. And that's divided by this, right? Rise over run, slope. Sound familiar? I sure hope so. So rise over run, you've got a slope an inverse tangent like it always does, it's going to take us take in a slope and it's going to pop us out an angle. Because that is just how inverse tangent works. So put in a slope, get out an angle. Slope is y over x, rise over run. Make sure you pay attention to positives and negatives so that way you get the right angles. Make sure you just keep track of that, because that actually can cause a problem. Or make sure that they're, they didn't say that it's 30 degrees from the vertical instead of 30 degrees from the horizontal. Or 30 degrees from the ceiling, because then that doesn't look like this, then that looks like this. That's the 30 degrees, right there. So just be careful on the wording. I mean, that I can't really teach you to do. You just kind of have to be careful as you read the word problems. But I think you can do it. Hopefully that helps some people. Um, in my next video, I'm actually going to start the uh, the projectile motion. Um, I'll see you then.